What's happening ladies and gentlemen, this is Min from Architecture Inspirations. Today I'm going to show you 10 material tips and tricks in theory for SketchUp that you need to know. Let's get started. Number 1. Colorize materials. When using a material, you might want to change the color of it to match your design. There are two ways to do that. One is you can select the material and go to the edit tab in the SketchUp material editor then use the color picker to give it a tint. You can see that it changes the color in the SketchUp viewport, but it doesn't show up in the interactive render. However, you can restart the render and you will see it updated. There we go. Now if you want to undo the changes, then you can click here to reset it to the default color. And like before, you might have to restart the render to see the update. The other way to colorize a material is to use color correction. To do that, Right click on the diffuse map of the material, select wrap in, color correction. This will place your diffuse map inside a color correction texture. Now you can use these sliders to change the color of your material. As you can see, this method doesn't show up in the SketchUp viewport, but it will be updated live in the interactive render. Just repeat this process for any material you like. The reason why I like using the color correction more is because you can use it for any map. For example, you can use it on the reflection and glossiness map to change how reflective or glossy the material is. Pretty cool, huh? Number 2. Texture Binding Sometimes you will have a material that looks really small in the render. And when you go to change the scale, you cannot do it because there's no map in the texture slot. And sometimes the material doesn't even show up in the SketchUp viewport. To fix this issue, you need to use the Texture Binding. First, go down to Texture Binding and make sure it is turned on. For the mode, here you will see three options. Custom, where you can paste a custom map as a binding texture. Texture Helper, which is basically a typical map that V-Ray creates for you to represent the scale. And the Auto Mode, which will tell V-Ray to automatically search for a map inside of the material and use it as a binding texture. Usually, I like to use the custom mode where I can copy the diffuse map and paste it as an instance in the texture slot. This way, whenever I change the map here, the binding texture will also change. Remember that this works with any map from any texture slot. For example, for other materials like pattern glass with no diffuse map, I like to copy the map of the pattern and use it as the binding texture. Number 3. Replacing materials. Here I have a scene with a white fabric on this chair, and it is also used in the multi material for the sofa. And here's the new material that I want to use as a replacement. To use it, I will right click, use as a replacement. And then select the material that I want to replace, and right click, replace in scene. As you can see, replace in scene will only replace the selected material where it is applied. Meanwhile, the sofa still has the old material as the reference. So to change this, Right click the old material and select replace all references. This will replace the selected material in all places where it is used as a reference. So materials such as two sided or multi material will get replaced like so. Number four, use glass material correctly. Here you can see I have four different squares. Each of them are made into a group with a glass material applied to it. Now I will do a test render. As you can see, only the one on the right renders correctly while the other three do not look like clear glass. If we zoom in closer, you can see that this first one doesn't have any thickness to it, so we know what's wrong with it. For the other ones, they all look the same. But if I turn on the monochrome style, then you will see that this one has a reverse face in the front. So to fix it, we can right click and reverse this face. It looks like the back is also reversed, so we need to flip that one as well. And there we go, that fixed it. This next one looks fine in the front, but it has a reverse space in the back, so we'll fix that too. As for this one, we just need to extrude it to give it thickness and that fixes that as well. There we go. When drawing glass, just make sure it has thickness and all of the faces have to point outward. Number 5. Transparent background through window. Another problem related to glass material is that sometimes the background doesn't come out as transparent even when you save the image as PNG so you can't add the background in post-production. To fix this, first I will select the glass material for the windows in my scene. In the VFB window, I also use the drop-down menu to change to the alpha channel. 
Then let's expand the refraction settings. You might also need to click here to show the advanced settings. Now go down here in the effect channels and change it to effect color and alpha. As you can see, in the alpha channel, all of the windows are now changed to a dark gray or black color, which indicates that these areas will be transparent when we export the render. If we change it back to color only, then you can see that they become white again. And that's how you fix it. Now you can export the image as a PNG or export the alpha channel and use it for post-production. If you want to learn more about how to add a background to your render, then check out this video. Number 6. Avoid repetitive textures. Another mistake beginners often make is having repetitive textures. For example, here I have a cabinet door component which I will copy to create another one right next to it. However, you can see that since they are copies of each other, the textures are in the similar position so the objects look identical, which is not very realistic. And since they are instances of the same component, adjusting the textures in one component will affect the other as well. To solve this problem, you can right click and make one of them unique, then adjust the materials like so. As you can see, even though the change is subtle, it's still very important, especially when you have more copies of the same object. Number 7. Material Randomization Material randomization is a trick that I like to use to create color variation in my material. To start, select the material that you want to use, then right click, wrap in, multi sub. Here you can choose where to get the ID from. We can try random by face material ID. Now we can use these sliders to tell V-Ray what to randomize. But as you can see, in this case, it's changing all of the wood planks at once, so let's try a different mode. Random by no name seems to work pretty well. Now we can go back to these sliders and adjust them so that the color doesn't vary too much. A subtle change can make it look more realistic. There we go, that looks good. Number 8. Fix Material Tiling Material tiling is another common issue. This usually occurs when the material repeats over a large face that is bigger than the texture size. Here you can see that our material looks really good up close, but the further we zoom out, the clearer we can see the tiling issue. To fix this, go to the diffuse map, and down in the texture placement, change the type to mapping source. Then in the UV placement source, add a new UVW placement. Next, go down to randomization and enable stochastic tiling. There we go. You can see that the stochastic tiling parameter can help you achieve a non-repeatable look by randomizing the texture mapping in each tile. With this method, no matter how big your surface is, there will still be no visible tiling issue. Number 9. How to correctly use displacement If you have tried to use the displacement map before, but it doesn't show up in the render, then here's how you can fix it. First, make sure your material already has a displacement map. If you're not familiar with displacement map, then watch this video here. Next, select your surface and make it into a group. You can see that this group doesn't have any material yet, so let's select the same material that we've used for the surface and apply it to the group. You can see it updated here. And soon after, it will update in the render as well. Now you can change the intensity of the displacement however you like. And that's one way of using displacement. If you have V-Ray 5, then you can use the new displacement geometry located in the V-Ray objects toolbar and apply it to the group. Then go to the geometry tab and click here to add a displacement map. Then you can change the amount here. Number 10. Purge unused materials. Although for a while, your scene might have more materials in the file than what is being used. So remember to get rid of the unused materials to make your model lighter. An easy way to do that is by using the Purge Unused Material button. Just click here, and there we go. Those are some material tips and tricks in video for SketchUp that you should know. If you're looking for more tutorials, I would suggest you take a look at this class on Skillshare, who is also the sponsor of today's video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes in creative skills like design, illustration, and many more. The premium membership will get you unlimited access so you can join any classes and communities like you like. The great thing is that Skillshare is really affordable with an annual subscription that's less than $10 a month. But as part of this sponsorship, Skillshare has set up a free trial for the first 1,000 people who join, so you can take all of their classes completely for free. If that's something you're interested in, then go to this link here. I will also leave a link to a few useful classes that I'm taking. One of them is Learn SketchUp and V-Ray, Beginner to Advanced. 
This is a comprehensive class with four parts that walks you step by step on how to build a house in SketchUp and then render with V-Ray. If you're looking for a similar tutorial for another software, then there's a class called Create Photorealistic Interior Renders with 3ds Max and V-Ray. There are also many more classes and communities that you can explore. Again, the first 1,000 people who use this link can join Skillshare today for free. Anyway, that's all for today, guys. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video, comment below, and let me know if you have any questions. Stay inspired, guys, and I'll see you next time.